everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this IWRA webinar. Today's title of our presentation is Smart Water, Smart Flows, Real World Applications of Digital Transformation and Water Management. Again, thanks for joining us today. Just a reminder that IWRA is in collaboration with the Union for the Mediterranean today. IWRA is an international network of researchers, practitioners, and those who are work working on the multidisciplinary sector on water resources issues. This platform provides a global knowledge-based forum for bridging dis disciplines and also geographies, connecting both professionals, students, individuals, corporations, and institutions who are concerned with our water resources. The theme, again, of our webinar is digital transformation. And our topics today will, will provide an overview of the current applications of digital transformation in the water sector. Additionally, we'll explore successful case studies and innovation from our industry leaders. And we'll also address challenges and opportunities that we see in digitalization and water management. Just a brief overview of how today's webinar will go. We'll have, we'll have introductory re remarks, as well as four presentations. And at the end, we'll have a time for a Q&A question and answers at the end. So please make sure you put your questions in the Q&A box and we'll have our speakers address those at the right time. For now, I'd like to turn it over to our moderator, Dr. Hassan Abelnega, international expert and chair of the Urban Water Security Working Group at IWRA. Hassan, over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Lindsay. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure. Uh, for me being with you today, and thanks for being with us today in this important webinar. Uh, the world of water has been going through major uh, transitions, and for sure, this digitalization will play a great role uh, to accelerate the progress uh, toward achieving the SDG sex on safely managed water and sanitation. And here, our uh, webinar today will focus on the application and real world applications on digital transformation of the water sectors from different countries and uh, for sure happy to have all of you. Uh, we will start our uh, uh, webinar uh, by welcoming uh, remarks from uh, Dr. Eric, uh, General Secretary for uh, International Water Resources Associations. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hassan. Thank you very much, uh, Lindsay. And uh, welcome. Good afternoon to all of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear um, colleagues. We are very uh, honored for this uh, new uh, webinar of the uh, Ray to partner with the Union for the Mediterranean. So um, thank you and welcome also to our colleagues from um, uh, the UFM. Very happy to organize this uh, webinar on this topic in a very dynamic region for RWI, the Mediterranean region. But of course, if you are from other regions, and I've seen other countries in the in the in the chat, you are also very um, welcome. The topics of today is very uh, important for us as IWRA and. Uh, you uh, may know that we have a working group on urban water security, uh, which is a platform, very dynamic platform, uh, we, uh, where experts collaborate to enhance um, our understanding of urban water challenges and to develop effective solutions. Uh, the insights that are shared uh, today about digital transformation align closely with the uh, uh, objectives of this uh, a group inside the WRA, and uh, uh, we will emphasize the critical role of digital transformation in securing water resources in urban environments, but not only in urban um, environments. In the Mediterranean region, especially, but in many other regions of the world, in fact, uh, we have to face very significant challenges related to water scarcity, the effects of climate change, population growth, and many other pressures on water resources. Um, the digitalization of the water sector is uh, becoming, or has become, a must. Uh, a wide range of innovative solutions already exist. They are becoming major, but they are not widely implemented in many regions of the, of the world. 
Um, and digital weather encompasses a wide range of, a wide range of solutions such as low-cost sensors, remote sensing, smart metering, big data, artificial intelligence, of course, decision support systems, application for water users themselves, enabling sustainable behavior uh, changes. And I think this is really important to enhance uh, awareness, to build uh, capacities. These are enablers for the systemic changes, digital transformations that are necessary for the adoption of, this, uh, of these solutions. And I also believe that the success of these new systems, these new technologies, uh, requires uh, more transparency, requires probably clarification of the roles between the different stakeholders, uh, requires um, new regulations, new policies, new public policies. And so this is so very important to combine not only uh, new technologies, new technical solutions, but also new governance approaches, new organizations, uh, new data information sharing among stakeholders. And all these issues are related to each other, and we will try to address them during the webinar of today. So thank you very much for being uh, part of it today. And uh, back to you, Dr. Hassan. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Eric. Uh, for sure, digitalization uh, today challenges us to change the way we manage water. And, and, and this is why it's really very important to many regions, like the Mediterranean region, where water is very scarce. And here over to uh, Mr. Mortaza Abadi, Deputy Secretary General for Water, Environment, and the Blue Economy of Union for Mediterranean. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hassan. Abu Naja, thank you, my friend. Thank you very much, uh, Lindsay. And I would extend this for Samira. And also, I believe for my friend Bora Halvesi that the four that they have done a great job to bring us around the screen, not the table. And this is part of the digitalization, actually, that we can do more while we are not uh, moving and exerting a lot of efforts traveling. And this is very important for us to uh, address in the framework of our work toward uh, sustainable development in the region, especially on the most important topic, which is the water sector. Because in our perspective, as a Union for the Mediterranean, an organization that work for integration and regional cooperation and to advance what I call it political and policy and financial technical engineering toward our member states and all water family working around the Mediterranean from policy to uh, technical issue to manage the water supply system. That is very important that this could be translated at the end for a political will, that this is the aim, I believe, uh, that we are here in Barcelona. And this is why, as an example, my country, Palestine, is part of this Union for the Mediterranean, we don't believe that our member states, they lack capacity to somehow to advance technical solution. But what is missing is to make sure that these technical solution, when they are successful to be translated and transferred to other, this is part of our work. And this is what we call it doing more by exerting less. Less here is less financial resources and less uh, human resources because we really face an era of a lot of insufficiency in terms of resources. And this has come to the subject why the Union for the Mediterranean start to be a shedding light on the digital transformation in water management in the Mediterranean. First of all, to respect our ministerial declaration on the water that had been approved 2017 and still the political umbrella for these 43 member states, where the ministers call upon us to work on innovation technology and also to make sure that data is available for all. And then we have another uh, political umbrella to follow, which is the new agenda for the European Union. They call it the new agenda of EU for the Mediterranean. 
where its fifth pillar was the digital transformation in all different sectors. And this especially came after the pandemic. And when it comes to the issues that we are tackling as a human being that believe in cooperation, in the Mediterranean, we don't want to do things just because we wanted to have our agenda busy. Our utmost objective is to uh, respond to these challenges that we are facing. And you know all these challenges from biodiversity loss to environment degradation to climate change. And the three challenges, they are being uh, translated into our region in many things, but two that they can be seen very uh, obviously. One of them is that we are in short sleep in North Europe in November, December, and sometimes we need a lot of jackets in the south of the Mediterranean in uh, February, April, where we have really a severe temperature change, which is not temperature high or close. And the second one, which is concerned the topic today, is the too much water, too little water that will that give us uh, hit us hard in terms of the availability of the resources, especially the water resources, as well as the issue related to the too much water that also require us to be alert. And look what happened to our beautiful city Darna in Libya last uh, year, as well as to our beautiful city in North Italy, where we lost more than 20 people in North Italy and many thousands in Darna. Both cases, less water, too much water, they require us to follow this important digital transformation, which is meant by Eric Trudeau that we need to have always data, big data management, and we need to have early warning system as well when it comes to the too much water. And when it comes to the too little water, we have many solutions to the too little water. I don't want to speak about them, but one of the most important solution is to have the non-revenue water. And I don't know how we can tackle the non-revenue water without having our water utility very digitalized and very good connected to SCADA system where they can detect the, here talking about the technical non-revenue water, not the non-technical revenue water, even the non-technical revenue water related to the collection of fees also need system, need uh, digital system, and also very good uh, uh, artificial intelligence. But when it comes to the technical solution, I here want to benefit by that, tell you something that because I live in Barcelona, and I am socially very active with many people. I have a friend of mine who's working to the Aguas de Barcelona, he invited me to his uh, office where they have the autopilot office to control every single drop of water in Barcelona. This is why we wanted to start working about the digitalization and to benefit all our member states, especially the southern part of the member state, in order to have this shift toward the Mediterranean region uh, utilities and water management system to be also considering this real world application of digital transformation. So this is the context why we are there. I think it is very relevant context and it works to have not only webinar about it, it's to have a strategy. This is why I was very happy to have Hassan and many other actors to develop a framework to have the strategy and work on the progress. And I think this is one of the milestones toward developing a strategy not based on a disk study and because our objective not to put ink on paper, our objective is to have an action plan. So I would like to call around uh, the screen. I see that we have more than 130 participants to really said what they believe on this digitalization and how to make it contributing to face our challenge when it comes to the three crises, the triple crisis, as well as how to make sure that we will benefit from these tools in order to be realistic in our planning and in our uh, implementation, especially when it comes to the donor cooperation aspects and uh, best uh, practice to have approximated strategy for our region in the Mediterranean, not unified one, as you know. So with this, I would like to thank you very much and we will be keep hearing you. So please be active to cooperate and to give us ideas to criticize and to uh, give us uh, what is really needed. I am not going to write them down. Hassan will do, and I think also Lindsay will do, Samira. Thank you.
Thanks so much, uh, Mataz, uh, for bringing the importance to have really a roadmap for digitalization, especially in the Mediterranean region. And we need also to mind that we need really to do more with less. This is uh, really very important for us and leads us to the next speaker, uh, uh, Ms. Samira Shaban, the policy expert and Union for Mediterranean, to tell us more about that in, uh, at UFM. The floor is yours, Samira. Thank you, thank you, Hassan. Uh, good evening, uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, Tissam. Good morning, Tissam. Um, I'd like to start with something um, that I was reading the other day, uh, as stated by Klaus Schwab, who first described the impact of digital and other convergent technologies as the fourth industrial revolution. The first industrial revolution used water and steam power to mechanize production. The second used electric power to create mass production. The third used electronics and information technology to automate production. Now, a fourth industrial revolution characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. And the Mediterranean region, with all its countries and the different levels of technological progress, is at the very heart of this transformation, similar to other parts of the world. Um, the level of preparedness to this impressive transformation depends on the infrastructure capacity, its preparedness, of course, uh, the technological progress achieved, but also on how policies and regulatory frameworks accompany this change, how able we are to share knowledge and create room and possibilities for capacity building and engaging in international partnerships. My name is Samira Shaban, and I work in the Union for the Mediterranean as a project manager within uh, the Water, Environment, and Blue Economy Division. Um, the Union for the Mediterranean is an intergovernmental organization working as a platform for dialogue and cooperation. And it is also a multi multilateral partnership that brings together 43 Euro Mediterranean member states um, with a view to increasing the potential for regional integration and cohesion. So from this perspective of our work, of the regional dialogue uh, on policy that we foster within the Union for the Mediterranean, the meetings that we've held in, uh, in the last three years, for example, with our member states and, and also other stakeholders, which fall under the regional platform on water, those meetings made it clear during discussions with member countries that digitalization was a topic that the UFM water agenda should tackle. Um, country participants suggested uh, those meetings to enhance the regional agenda on water by tackling issues brought about by COVID-19, in particular digitalization and digitalization when it comes to water access, sanitation and hygiene. Indeed, technic, uh, digital technologies are key enablers to achieve the modernization needed. And today, the Mediterranean faces major challenges to achieve the desired level of sustainability in uh, the man management of water systems. Mm, increasing water demands, increasing water demands coupled with climate change are major contributors to the great imbalance between the supply and demand of water resources. The Union for the Mediterranean wants to contribute to the development of digitalization in uh, water management in the Mediterranean. That's why uh, we held on uh, 5th, 5th of December last year, the first webinar hosted by, by the UFM, the first online UFM conference on digital transformation of the water sector in the Mediterranean with the objective to bring together stakeholders, experts, and policymakers to explore the current state of digitalization in the water sector, its potential benefits, challenges, and its transformative impact in the Mediterranean region. 
The event uh, also served as a platform for co-designing policy recommendations to accelerate digital transformation. And um, also, as a matter of fact, there was a survey, uh, some polls that attendants were asked to, to reply. And um, the study that we are going to publish on uh, the digital transformation of the water system in the Mediterranean um, draw some insights from, from that conference and, uh, and surveys. That conference, um, well, and this one, this conference also served as a first step for a roadmap towards digitalization of the water sector in the Mediterranean region. As uh, I was saying earlier, our member states deem it essential to formulate some um, effective strategies to achieve sustainable development goals, and uh, address pressing water-related issues in, in the region. And also, I wanted to say that from um, that uh, first conference and the study we're going to publish, we learned from the Spanish experience on its digitalization efforts in the whole water cycle. So the study shows that the adoption of digital technologies in the water sector brings several benefits. Um, the adoption of digital technologies, this is important to retain, brings more than technological integration. There is value potential uh, from the application of digital technologies like uh, increased operational efficiency with optimizing water utilities processes, water conservation, the ability to mitigate water losses through early detection, enhanced resource management, since digitalization plays a pivotal role in optimizing the allocation and use of water resources, and uh, also an improved climate resilience through predictive analysis and modeling, which enable authorities to anticipate and respond to shifts in water availability. And most importantly, digitalization fosters a paradigm shift towards sustainable water use practices. By optimizing operations, reducing losses, and enhancing uh, resource management, the water sector becomes more environmentally conscious. Mm -hmm. Sustainable water use is not only an intrinsic goal, but also a crucial component of broader environmental conservation efforts. Digital technologies facilitate the alignment of water management practices with the principles of ecological sustainability. So I think, let yeah. me finalize this. Also, I wanted to mention that um, national plans on digitalization of the water sector can also help boost employment opportunities. Something we learned from the Spanish experience is that um, one of the focus areas of their plan is to generate approximately 3,500 highly skilled technical jobs in fields related to water management, including engineer, water science, and technology. So to finalize, I'd like to say that on this journey towards digitalization, developing a roadmap for the effective uh, digital transformation of the water sector will be very important in the Mediterranean region. Such a roadmap can be the basis over which recommendations, showcasing best practices, technological advancements, new institutional frameworks, information dissemination, the promotion, community engagement and awareness, all this can happen under the umbrella of a roadmap for the effective digital transformation of the water sector in the Mediterranean. So I will finish here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Samira, for really making uh, really the case for digitalization and benefits for uh, for it for our water sector and also beyond the, the sector itself. And uh, this is brings us to also uh, to interact also with the audience. As Matez said, that we need also to hear from our audience, uh, uh, please also share your initiatives, your projects. If you are, if you know any projects working on digitalization, and uh, we have also prepared for you uh, uh, some questions that could be shared with you, uh, Lindsay. Maybe you can share the first question, and this is brings us to really look on the implementation and also the application that we can see. Uh, 
uh, from uh, for sure industry leaders and here uh, uh, let me introduce to you uh, the first presentation for uh, Mr. Bora, he is a sustainability and digitalization professional at Siemens. He will present uh, digitalization and there also work on, on this matter. The floor is yours, Bora. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Hassan. And thank you uh, for the previous speakers to set the scene. Let me, let me share my screen and start the presentation. And I hope you can see. So um, my name is Borel Elvaji. I am part of Siemens Digital in Industries, uh, responsible for water and wastewater uh, and uh, for the Mediterranean region and also Middle East. Uh, basically, I'm located in uh, Middle East and United Arab Emirates for 15 years. And uh, I've been through many different commercial roles with different entities and uh, working with utilities and energy and water utilities more than 15 years. So today I'm going to talk about digital transformation on water networks, how we are seeing it, and uh, giving you a short overview uh, about our water application suite. Um, mainly these are software solutions that we, we, are, we are naming as SIVA, which is a short acronym for Siemens uh, Water Applications. And then, as we don't have much time, I will go uh, only one uh, application, a little bit giving you insight how it is working and how we can save cost and energy uh, with C1 Network Optimizer. And then uh, I will finish my uh, agenda with a case study coming from Greece, uh, which is a Municipal Water Authority Dayal uh, in, in Larissa. So, as, as the previous speakers already mentioned, um, also United Nations uh, having a goal, uh, number six, uh, very clear, saying that clean water and sanitation is a basic human need and rights, and uh, we need to uh, make everybody access uh, clean water and sanitation anywhere in the world, but we have challenges. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, we, are, we have challenge of climate change, uh, we have challenge of uh, fast urbanization, population growth, and different uh, use of water applications are growing. Uh, one of the things I read, read this week is that AI is consuming a lot of water due to uh, new uh, data centers to be built around. So the, uh, the water scarcity problem is growing every day. And when we look at our network or our infrastructure, uh, whenever we are talking with utilities or water distribution companies, uh, mainly their systems are uh, separate and in a siloed way. Uh, this is due to uh, our technology when it was implemented, uh, starting from the reservoirs to the transportation pipelines or pumping stations or treatment plants. Uh, all this infrastructure is actually not talking to each other and having different uh, type of automation, instrumentation systems, which are not connected. Um, but today, if we are talking about distribution, uh, uh, transformation of uh, water networks uh, and achieving sustainable, resilient uh, access to water, we need to make a shift. And this shift is actually to integrate uh, everything together on the water cycle and arrive to an integrated water management based on digital technologies. So this is, of course, an ultimate goal for everyone. Uh, as previously stated, we, have, we are seeing, as in, inside the industry, we are seeing a lot of benefits can be captured. Uh, like operational efficiency, less energy usage, uh, of course, uh, for, the, for the water scarcity, using the water efficiently, also using the workforce and the finance that we have on the right amount and the right place. So we need to know what's happening uh, on the network and we need to capture the full water cycle. So as a, as a manufacturer, as a 
technology provider, how Siemens is working on that. First of all, as I said, we are trying to capture the full water cycle. And of course, we are not expecting uh, everybody is going to buy everything from one vendor. So we are open for uh, different uh, collaborations. Also, we are collaborating uh, with other companies like Bentley uh, and, and the other partners here. So, but what the problem is that whenever we are going to talk, we are with a utility, we are finding a, a gap in between. So our strategy is try to generate applications tackling these gaps and try to fulfill this, uh, these gaps for better integrating uh, the water cycle in, into a reality transformation. Um, so if I may introduce uh, the, uh, the applications that we have, by the way, these are not all the applications, but due to time, these are some selected applications, which I'm going to talk about. We have uh, Leak Finder, Siva Leak Finder, uh, which is leveraging AI and machine learning, which is very popular and uh, 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 latest technology in the industry to detect leaks and uh, understand the technical losses and the location uh, using flow meters. Uh, and also we have meter data management and related to customer and metering, we have a couple of more like SIVA usage viewer and user connector. These are all uh, actually uh, focusing on the behavior of the customer, how we are using the water uh, behind the meter. Uh, and we have a great technology to understand the usage behavior and also understand, make, make our customers to understand how they are performing against the similar profiles in their network. If they are performing better uh, according to their neighbor, of course, they are good, but if they are performing less or, or, or not efficiently in their neighborhood, they can check their bill or this information, and maybe they can check their uh, infrastructure at home, and they can find the leaks uh, or, or other uh, high usage uh, areas to rectify. So these are very important to connect a network and the customer because it's not it's a collaborative effort. And usually transformation is, is not a project, it's like a journey. Uh, and I will explain this uh, in, in, in the uh, last slide with the case study also. Also, we are, we are working on sewerage and uh, sewer optimizer is one of our products. We are also working on the stormwater management uh, as it is rightly said by uh, Mr. Almutaz. Uh, it is very important to tackle the uh, this uh, stormwater as the rain uh, uh, regime is changing and uh, global warming is pushing us to the boundaries. Um, so we are trying to again use AI and machine learning to understand the blockages before it is happening in such networks and learning from the history, learning for each asset specifically is helping a lot. Also, asset-based solutions, of course, these are very popular to protect pumps, uh, pumping operations. Uh, also, quality, water quality is very important uh, for, for utilities to satisfy our customer requirements. Also, it's a health requirement. We need to ensure that people are uh, reaching uh, safe and reliable water supply. And the last, but, but not the least, uh, SIVA Network Optimizer is a, a solution which I'm going to talk about a little bit more deeply on the next slides. Um, so nothing, nothing to say on this one. Um, let me go right in the uh, in the SIVA network optimizer. So SIVA, SIVA network optimizer basically is targeting uh, operational efficiency of a whole network. Um, how we are working on this is uh, actually we are trying to improve the utiliz utilization of the existing assets and the uh, match the consumption uh, requirements based uh, on optimized controlling of pumpings, pumping stations and other assets. So, and the best part of this application is it is fully digital application. 
usually you don't need to invest any new hardware. Uh, if we are able to get your uh, network data, uh, reservoirs, pumping uh, station data, we are able to create a digital twin and we are able to uh, work on that digital twin on what if scenarios. So, um, and these this scenarios actually are not, um, are not siloed, as I explained. We are also linking to, uh, to different uh, SCADA or readings from the real-time reading on the, on the field. So we can, uh, we can understand the uh, real-time uh, filling levels, supply models, or we can integrate the electricity rates and plan downtimes. So the system is getting more intelligent whenever we get um, more uh, integration with other systems you may have. So uh, the idea is that system is virtually trying to optimize the operation, uh, considering the maintenance uh, and uh, the resources you may have, and try to make uh, the, uh, the approach first time right. So whenever we are planning, if we have the right parameters in hand, uh, you will have an optimization plan which is secure uh, and ready to implement or send through your schedule to your pumping stations. And then you can see the uh, also evolution of this optimization plan uh, on the field uh, on real time basis. And then of course, as I said, you can see the tank levels. This is one of the uh, screenshot we have on actual system. Uh, you can uh, identify your limits, uh, what will be the minimum limit you can have on your tank or on your reservoir. And the system is always trying to keep, the, uh, keep this volume available with you uh, and also not, not crossing the maximum volume, of course. And you can create your own dashboards and uh, receive the information and, uh, of course, according to your KPIs, uh, you can uh, you can manage it. So some other screenshot. Uh, one of the uh, actually great thing is that uh, integrating the uh, energy cost in, into the system. Uh, system is always trying to optimize the energy consumption based on the energy cost as well. So this is bringing water utilities very close to the electricity utilities uh, today. Uh, as the pumping operation is uh, consuming a lot of energy, this may help also the energy utilities to reduce their peak loading because this pumping operation mostly will be on the out of this window and will be, uh, will be done uh, on a lower cost cycle, uh, maybe through the night or, or people are not using energy. So in short, uh, this application alone uh, can save you uh, operational and, uh, and uh, optimization of costs. Uh, you can save resources, you can downtime, lower the downtimes, uh, handle the market volatility for the energy prices, and you can secure the supply of water. And I think one of the uh, one of the best practice that we have, and this is the last slide for me, is coming from Greek, as I mentioned in the beginning, from city of Larissa uh, with Dayal Municipal Water Company. Um, actually, we, we start to work uh, with Dayal uh, approximately five years back. And as they are managing uh, different types of networks, uh, first of all, fresh water, uh, wastewater network and irrigation and wastewater treatment plants. Uh, we start to digitalize all these operations and try to combine into uh, one system. So according to uh, our uh, project, uh, we take 18 pump stations for irrigation into, into uh, in the SCADA center. Uh, and then we start with the wastewater treatment plants and pumping stations uh, with our control system. And then they, they, they start to see and understand what's going on entire network. And uh, we finally we implement the uh, uh, C1 network optimizer application 
and they start to realize the benefits immediately. And one application alone can save you around 20%, uh, which is very big, uh, and return of investment, of course, is getting very good. And then they start with the irrigation network and with some uh, customized solution, actually, uh, we, we, have, we are now able to understand which, which farmer is using how much water at, uh, uh, at any time of the day and also on the allocated slot. So the idea is that uh, the farmers should take their allocated slot with the RFID card and uh, use the water efficiently and uh, not exceed the allocated water for, for their selves um, to save the groundwater and the environment as well. So with using efficient uh, drives, pumps, motors, and uh, irrigation practice, which I mentioned, uh, we, we are now sitting on a 50% reduction in energy and water use when we compare the, the consumption uh, five years back. So it's a tremendous result, and uh, this is uh, informing how the digital transformation can uh, make, make thing, things reality. So water scarcity is not a big problem for them now, and they are now moving towards to uh, leak detection and reducing the technical losses, uh, and it's a journey. It's not a project. They start with digitizing their networks, collecting the information, uh, and then implementing smart applications on top, and then they are targeting one by one what they want to achieve, uh, and this journey continues. So I believe this is this is a very good example of it, um, and it's a Mediterranean reference. That is the end of my presentation, and this is my contact details. If you want to reach me, uh, please you can send a request on the LinkedIn profile or you can send me email and then we can discuss. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, uh, Pura, for uh, really presenting the SEWA applications. It's really important to see uh, how really digitalization can play a great role and the 50% for reduction and water and energy is really a good solution. But I think we need uh, you know, to publish this, uh, to share these results and how these results also came uh, to us. And as you said, it's not about uh, it's a, not a journey. It's a it's a journey, not a project. And uh, we really need not only to connect the water stakeholders, but also and the systems for sure. Uh, and this is really important for us. And uh, for our audience, I will ask you to go for the Q and A. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, Pura, and for sure we will have discussions after the presentations. And we have also the poll questions for those who uh, haven't replied yet to the poll questions. Please answer the, the questions. We'll present the results at the end. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I, uh, uh, we would like to hear the next speaker, Mr. Slavko. He is an industry sales director at Ventry for Water and uh, Wastewater Solutions. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Slavko. Thank you, Hassan. Uh... Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, fellow water professionals. My presentation will be also showing some case studies of the digital technologies around the world in focus on urban water management, as says the title express. First of all, my name is Slavko. I'm working for Bentley Systems. Bentley Systems is the engineering software company. We are delivering software solutions for designing, planning, designing, construction, and operating any type of infrastructure including water, wastewater, and stormwater infrastructure as well. So um, many of the colleagues, I mean, Eric mentioned, Almataz mentioned, Hassan, Samira, I'm not going to repeat all of this. So there are a lot of pressing issues in water and climate change definitely with uh, extra rainfall information and also extra dry period is accelerating this. So there is a lot to do, and especially in the urban water environment. So one of where the, the digital technologies, digital twins, digital models, including AI, recent developments of large language models as well, 
can help is basically in this type of uh, efficiencies. So first of all, um, a reduction of non-revenue water. The previous speaker already mentioned that, that this is a, one of the key topics because uh, if you want to tackle the water scarcity in Mediterranean and semi-arid regions, we need to fix the leaks before constructing any type of desalination plants which are expensive or any new reservoirs. We need really to improve efficiency of what we have. Second is obviously energy efficiency. I think Larissa K study also was a good a good one to show how we can improve energy efficiency. You know the prices of uh, electricity at the moment and the gas they tripled throughout the, the couple of years. So 30% of the operational cost basically of any water companies is about energy. And needless to say, energy is, is co connected to CO2 footprint and other greenhouse gases as well. So that is hand in hand. I will explain a little bit uh, uh, case study from Rotterdam here, how they tackle the problem of CO2 emissions as well. A reduc reduction of service interruptions, of course, we would like to deliver safe and secure and resilient water infrastructure to our customers, reduction of operational costs. And finally, we need tools how to plan our capital investments for the future, master planning, of course, learning from data, using simulation models or a digital twins, I call them, which connects various data sources such that we can make a better decision where to invest our money for the future. Because water security is an important topic. In terms of solutions, Bentley has a lot of technology. I'm not going to, to dwell into the technologies, but just remember, obviously, for the urban water networks, potable water networks, but also irrigation networks under pressure, we have a digital twin, which is called WaterSide. Um, for the urban sewer and also the storm drainage networks, sometimes they are combined, sometimes they are separated, obviously. We try to separate them. I remember we have sewer side, which is a digital twin, which ut utilizes modeling, data-driven techniques, and also forecasting and AI technologies. Finally, for the water treatment plants, wastewater treatment plants, and desal plants, we have plant side, which is zooming into the 3D environment of the plant, monitoring various biological and chemical parameters, and also forecasting those parameters in terms of inflows into the receiving uh, water. And recently, just a couple of months ago, Related to water scarcity and water resources on the catchment scale, we'll, we launched a new monitoring solution, which is called dam monitoring. So any type of dams, you know, there are more than 300,000 dams in the world, which are large dams, which contributes towards water supply, only needless to say energy generation as well. So we need to monitor those dams in terms of stability. Uh, the recent flooding that occurred in Dira and the collapse of the dam could have been, you know, maybe also avoid it if we had some early warning system with a dam monitoring solution. Today, I'm going to speak only about water side, which is for the potable water networks and irrigation networks under pressure, obviously. So water side is a digital twin, which is combining various type of existing data. Many of the water companies have silos of data, obviously, and we're always advocating to have a, some sort of a simulation model, hydraulic model, component number one, component number two, GIS, any type of GIS, QGIS, ArcGIS, even CAT files, as build drawings would be sufficient in order to know, you know, the assets which are underground and overground. More and more water companies, every water company, by the way, one of the IoT devices which were installed in the in the 60s, even in the 50s, was the SCADA systems. Many of the water companies has a, already many advanced SCADA systems which are monitoring flows, pressures, pumping settings, PRV settings, et cetera. So that data, bringing it into the digital twin will bring a lot of value. Obviously, digital water meters, it's a needless to say, many countries are experimenting, like the Netherlands is obviously equipped with a lot of digital water meters, but also developing countries, countries in the Mediterranean, like Italy, Spain, Greece, obviously also Egypt, investing heavily in digital water meters. Dubai, for example, is the first city where uh, there are 950,000 digital water meters sending data constantly to a, a server and what to do with this data. So there is a lot to do, obviously, visualization insights, detection of events, reduction of leakages, but also forecasting of the future demands as well. All of these business outcomes which are below can be done while using the existing data. And if data is not available, one of the questions was on the, on the chat box, there are various 
techniques, colleagues, in order to launch a data campaign, obviously. Remote sensing, uh, for example, ground penetration, rather, as build drawings. Sometimes you can also fly a drone and, and get a you know 3D model of your water treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant, dam, etc. So there are a lot of technologies around there and low cost technologies to collect data. But the willingness to collect should be there from the utilities oper owner operators and the consulting system with the support of the technology providers, obviously, that we are today. So imagine if we can possibly reduce, you know, 15%, uh, less than 15% is obviously a world-class utility. 35% uh, reduction of customer service interruptions, very important, you know, uh, companies are striving towards uh, customer satisfaction, obviously. The network should be resilient. The network should be also safe and secure in terms of delivering drinking water at the end of the day. And a reduction of pumping and uh, energy costs as well. So I'm going to show you a couple of case studies. I will start first uh, close to my, my hometown. I live in Delft, very close to Rotterdam, by the way. So this is uh, Delft is a very small city just uh, north of, of Rotterdam. This is the city of Rotterdam and Evidus Water Company is uh, advancing in terms of carbon neutrality. They put a very aggressive plan in till 2025, basically next year in order to be carbon neutral in terms of operations. So they utilized hydraulic model, water jams from Bentley together with a digital twin, which is called WaterSide, which is a real time system which is showing what is happening into the network and also optimizing the pumps throughout the PLCs, optimizing the pumping uh, curves, optimizing the, you know, the best efficiency points, et cetera. And you can see only for one treatment facility, which is in Kralingen, they, they managed to sell around 300,000 euro annually. Imagine if you can, now they're implementing it for the complete network, which is two and a half million customers in Rotterdam. This can be a potential up to 5 million of savings annually. Uh, while doing that, they're also reducing the carbon CO2 emissions because you know that the pumping station is using electricity from, I don't know, from a coal plant or a gas plant, or they're using renewable electricity at this point in time. So you can couple that with the pumping efficiencies as well. This is another case study from Greece, as the previous speaker mentioned. So we were working also uh, with many in Mediterranean countries. So in Greece, this is city of Kozani, which is a mid-sized utility, around 140,000 people, but also very touristic, obviously, during the summer period, you have a lot of tourists and demand is rising high. One of the key problems was here, water losses, obviously. So around 26% of water losses in the system. And by utilizing SCADA, SCADA, existing SCADA systems and deploying more uh, pressure loggers, flow meters on the ground and utilizing hydraulic modeling, everything was put together in a digital twin, which is called WaterSide. So you can see in the trend, the long-term trend of diminishing the, the flow in the, in the complete central zone by 20% and also time to repair. So it's a possible possibility to uh, identify leaks to identify events automatically by patterns, by statistical analysis tools, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, while event is identified, the operational team saved, you know, 50% in the repair time. Previously, someone needed to report it from, from basically, or the operational team needed to sweep the area. But now having a digital operational twin, which is monitoring the network constantly and simulating as well, constantly, it's possible for early detection in order to find anomalies and, and leakages. Um, this is one of the case studies where we have the complete urban cycle covered. So potable water, receiving water, which is the wastewater together with the storm water. And finally, after the wastewater treatment plant, uh, plants basically, the water is released, of course, city of Porto with the beaches, very touristic area, and complete simulation models together with real-time digital twins were implemented in city of Porto. This is our flagship product where the complete urban water cycle is monitored. Some of the reporting on, on term, in terms of business outcomes, this is very important, I'm mentioning again, we are not using you know, technology for the sake of technology, but really to address some business challenges and business outcomes. You can see here, I'm not going to read, but uh, what supply interruptions fell around with 43%. Additional non-revenue water reduced, duration of pipe burst, then sewer collapses. Sewer collapses because the sewer collapses were there because of blockages, because of, of course, soil subsidence, groundwater, storm, which is coming, uh, rainfall, etc. So sewer collapses were managed to improve by 44%. 
and a reduction of customer complaint. At the end of the day, utilities exist to, to serve the customers, as you can imagine, all of us. This is another case study from a Mediterranean country, so City of Paris, upcoming Olympic Games, a lot of pressure on City of Paris to manage all of the complete infrastructure. We did a pilot project for Montmartre Radio, which is very interesting one because it's a, it's a high hill terrain, a lot of pumping, as you can imagine, very touristic. So prediction of the demand, which is three times, four times changing mm -hmm. during the day, it's really a key here in order to chlorinate the water, in order to balance the water with the reservoirs, et cetera. So they, they utilized hydraulic model, water jams, in order to simulate what is if else scenarios. They were using also demand forecasting to fit that into the models. So demand forecasting is using machine learning and artificial intelligence, basically, Deep, uh, deep neural networks in order to forecast the demands for the coming seven days even, taking into account weather forecast, tourists taking into account days of the week's uh, events, anything which is happening in the in the area in order to, to fit that to the model. This is just a fantastic achievement and now they're, they're planning to roll out that to another areas as well because city of Paris is quite, quite large. So uh, what I wanted to mention colleagues is there is a lot of technology. You'll hear today from the technology vendors, obviously, from Siemens, from Idrica, from ourselves, and the other, other technology vendors. Technology is there, but it's important that how to start. Obviously, there should be a buy-in from the management. There should be a digital transformation map. And what is the first step is to first understand what are the critical business outcomes that the utility wants to realize. If it is a water scarcity, let's discuss that. If it is a Disposal of the treat treated water, let's discuss that. Can we reuse the treated water for irrigation, for example? If it is a leakage, let's discuss that. So there are various, obviously, business outcomes we want to achieve. Once we understand that, understand the state of the data. Data is also important, of course. Maybe to kick off a pilot project where the data collection, mm -hmm. the data validation, the data fusion will be also part of that pilot project. I call it sometimes... Not a pilot project. I avoid that terminology because uh, in water utilities we have a lot of pilot projects, but not a real, you know, full scale implementation. So I call it more proof of concept or a proof of value that this can work and then scale it up quickly in order to to benefit basically. Um, finally, last slide maybe for the for the discussion, just to throw it on the table. Look, colleagues, all of this is very highly also related to policies, and I think Samira addressed that one. So what water should be prioritized? Water is still treated as a sort of commodity. It's given by, you know, be given by the nature, given by by the God, etc. But we need a good policy because uh, in Europe, for example, there is a green deal, which is more related to energy transition, to uh, net zero, etc. But there is no policy regarding water. Why don't we have a blue deal? in terms of policy in order to stimulate savings of water, demand, master planning, water scarcity, security, flood protection, et cetera. So we need policies and policies regulations also for the Mediterranean countries, which are part of this, uh, this webinar. Then adoption of digital technology should be fostered obviously by these policies. If, if the policies and the regulations say, hey guys, you need to digitize your, your network, you need to understand your assets, you need to monitor your assets in order to you know, operate them efficiently, then that will come. So this digitalization and digital transformation will come naturally. At the moment is just more based on, on the good willingness and leadership of the water companies. But policy and legislative requirements should be there as a sort of a must. And of course, a holistic forward-looking approach in the infrastructure. We are talking about water infrastructure here, but needless to, to talk about the environment, the water resources in the catchment area. So more holistic approach is definitely needed. So I will finish here. And just uh, if you want to you know look more about this, um, uh, technologies, but look also, I see a lot of educational people on the on the call. If you're interested, if you're a university student research organization, there is a free website, endlyeducation.com. So go there. You can also download and use some of these software technologies free of charge if it is for nonprofit uh, uh, purposes as well. So thank you and okay. Hassan, over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Slavico. It's really important to see these applications in many uh, countries and as you said it's really important to have really a roadmap with uh, really concrete KPIs for digitalization so that it would guide all water stakeholders and for sure uh, what you have presented in terms of 
uh, really uh, what can uh, digitalization play a great role on water and uh, carbon or water energy carbon uh, nexus uh, is really important uh, for uh, the nexus agenda. Uh, without further ado, I uh, give the floor to the next speaker, uh, Lilian. She is uh, the development director, uh, Agro Paris Tech uh, Swiss, uh, that share uh, water for all uh, general uh, management of water and sanitation services. Lilian, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Beta, and for this opportunity for putting the academy in the center of the discussion, so important. Could you see the slides very well or? Yes, uh, please make it in presentation mode. Ah, yes, I do so I just uh, did it. It's okay? Yes, okay, go ahead. Okay, perfect, so thank you again. And then the, to start that you are started talking about the issues and the, the solution with digitalization, but we needed to focus that water, um, all the collective, you know, collective sanitation is often left behind with the, this, the, the digitalization process. And then it could be something that you could improve and uh, improve more than ever this sector. Then to keep this in mind during my presentation, that uh, the most important is always uh, to start with women. Uh, people can change the world. And then if you talk about the digitalization, you need to talk about the people. And then the master, Water for All, I show some of the graduates that you have from the promotion 21 and 22 under the Dr. Leticia Obeng, a 23, 24 now with Dr. Sivan Usher, the mentors of the team, that will be the future leaders in Africa and Asia. And then it's important to link it uh, that because since 2009, we started training the manager, more than 200 managers from 54 countries and four continents. And that is why that the, the goal in the digitalization management, the leadership, the development uh, is in the excellence of the center in the South. And uh, the chair, Water for All, I'm Lilian Quell, as you say, that as development director, wanted to uh, bring to you uh, in this discussion that uh, you needed to focus and uh, uh, to bring in more partners to develop all kind of management that could improve uh, the system. And then we start with uh, our partners in the beginning, but you are growing so much. And then we uh, have, you are so proud to highlight that Hydropolis Lavalette is uh, now uh, the, the, the first campus that you are launched two months ago in Montpellier. And you are part also of GGO, then um, uh, and the uh, agro paritech is growing and growing with the center of the south um the the learning parts uh, and the knowledge needed to be shared and then you have this opportunity with the master you have a lot of master in uh, mba but for the public for the utilities we needed to improve the data and that is the link with the academy to find the jobs and they put the right competences that you need for the people and the link it together. The classes about digitalization and the platform e learning uh, and the network alumni and the, uh, the tools to, uh, to catalogize the indicator from different countries is essential to move in and the grounded academy. But let's start imagine the future, the future of a city with all kinds of treatments and then what you can do. You can end the desanalization plant, you can uh, with artificial intelligence driving optimization in the desanimation membrane system, you can personalize the customer service. You can, uh, the real time water network management integrating uh, with the net network and the meters and automatically cellular network monitoring with the real time response uh, to rainfall events. That is the meteorological that a lot of you start doing. 
And then just to see the potential about the intelligence and the artificial intelligence, the digitalization management in a city with all treatments. But the, as academic, as managers, the first thing we need to have the good questions and then not go to improve your company, your utility, just to say, I want data, data, and data, more data. Uh, that's you uh, sometimes could uh, think that you will uh, be faster, but if you need uh, to anticipate, you need to go for the, the good question to planify and the, the real, the utility, the water utility, you only want uh, the digitalization if they uh, anticipate, they organize. Then we prefer. We presented for, uh, to our uh, alumni and uh, to our uh, managers that you start doing the good question. Do you collect the right data? Do you know really what your users and anticipate the future of your users? I saw a lot of speakers before me that talk about it, that how is important to anticipate what you happen with your users before the application of, of the data management. And also the historical data, you enhance your vision and a specific set of information. And if you one thing that you would like that you memorize in this presentation and that it takes time. Time is what you need, and and Africa and Asia, you know that you have a lot of lack of information data in the sectors. And then, if you want to have the good and available uh, data, you need to take time to prepare. Okay, uh, the the last steps is effectively with the digital twins. We need uh, to prepare. And at the same time that you have the real projects, you need to uh, decrease the risks with the op hypothesis, optimization, and improve uh, the future infrastructure needs at the same time. Then that is the four steps that you think that is the most, uh, the quick win that uh, for the digital um, management. But let's go what is the basic needs of the performance and the operators. For example, here I have the basic, the meteorology, instrumentation, autom automatization, uh, that is in this installation and the configuration, as you know, all of us by via Bluetooth. And then after you have the connection and the supervision, and the, with the collecting data and display with the steering and the operation tools. That is the critical and the validation data with the different systems. And for the last, and not the least, that the tools of the analyzing and the control the performance. That is very important to know the step by step what your needs and how you can improve each sector. It's with captures, it's collecting data, it's to pay the performance. But the mission always is to control, to optimize, to give safety, the security of the data and share usable, usable data. Then um, in the shared water for all, that is important that you have a lot of partners and uh, that it came to give class and a manager advisor also came and uh, they explained very well that uh, how they work with the team and then the references and the digital solution and uh, how they include the offers and automatic process, improve customer exigences and the product and the reduce operation costs. Um, and then uh, in the beginning of this presentation, we talk about no revenue water. And that is a very important point because the most of the 200 managers that came to the Water for All chair, uh, uh, they had other issues, but the most important issues is the no revenue water. And then I think that data needed to be linked to solve this issue, technical or commercial. Another uh, partner that came into the share and used the machine learning and the use cases that uh, to improve the water infrastructures, uh, the water demand to anticipate to financial service, 
to the social media, to our house. Uh, and then that is the GIS. That's, we need to disseminate good practices and not to stay with one, only one solution. Uh, I, I appreciate a lot of this kind of presentation when you uh, said advanced that the plan, the renew of the assets, then you map in the state of the network and facilitate access of data when improving inspection and the maintenance and strategies. Uh, you will obtain a clear vision of the future. You anticipate the impact of values and the optimizing the investments. That's it, what you are trying to do until now. And the, the last year with the manage, manager from the chef, you make some uh, tracks immersion. They stay uh, one month in a country and we went to Senegal. And the, in Senegal, you, they learn a lot of Sino and the Sino innovations that what they did, they put the company and the digitalization methods, and then uh, they, the customers uh, have now connected uh, directly with the service, uh, the digitalization about operations, the interventions, inventory planning, digital, digitalization. They have barcodes and with uh, uh, smartphones and drinking water network also connect. That is a case study to see the how in Africa you can also improve and improve. This example also of one connect just to put also like you have, you have the tools, uh, the smart tools, you need to transfer, to collect the data, and always to have a good user in the end for our service, our clients, or our suppliers. And the, the system is scalable, that is open for any issues. And then how I didn't bring it today, a lot of information about the smart cities in Africa and Asia, the most students that you have inside the chair, I would like to outline the most important thing about the obstacles that you cannot have the smart cities uh, integrated in the South. The first thing is the question to improve human resources and organization more than technology. The second one is a require the constant energy service. You uh, need Lilian, to... can you wrap up in one minute, please? Okay, so that is the last slide. That is this slide. That is 24 hours seven. And to have the advanced and corporate, the culture inside the, the, the corporate and it bring innovation, innovation and uh, operation department working together and out of the water sector. I thank you so much for the time and uh, the team from the Water for All chair is here and you can have uh, uh, answer your questions in the few minutes. Thank you yeah. so much. Thanks so much, Lilian, for your uh, great presentation. Uh, I think it's really now uh, very important to see. We have seen uh, many examples, but we, we see also uh, some uh, great transformations that we see in Spain, and this is uh, leads us to the next speaker, uh, uh, Mr. Jorge. He is a business development uh, manager at Edrica uh, to present to us the solutions that has been implementing in, in Valencia and in Spain. So, floor is yours, uh, your... So, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear yes. you and I see yes. your presentation. Uh, thank you to the International Water Resource Association and the Union of the Mediterranean. Uh, thank you, Hassan, and welcome everyone. Um, and thank you for attending this presentation. Uh, my name is Jorge Helmberg. I'm Business Development Director at, at, at IDRICA, and I work in engineering companies in a, uh, also in, in a water agency, being responsible for the management of water resources. And during the last 15 years in digital transformation on the water cycle, and I will uh, be talking uh, today about the experience of Idric and the digital transformation process of the water sector, and more specifically to, by telling you a great success uh, story with our product Silent View Power by Goego. So the, the story starts in the city of Valencia in Spain. I wanted to tell you this story, uh, among other su successful cases that we have from Toronto to Hong Kong or or in different countries, like in Middle East uh, or in Asia or in North America, for two reasons, especially one of, of them, because uh, it's a Mediterranean city 
Uh, and and the second one uh, because it's the the oldest case that we have and it's the beginning of of our of our company. Um, so um, this is the the results of this the transformation process and it is a uh, global Omnium is a leading company uh, leading water utility in Europe at a technological level with more than 130 years old. Uh, leading uh, with uh, more than 400 municipalities. And the uh, digital transformation process began in 2005, where uh, we had some uh, problems, water scarcity, the cost of uh, water treatment, and also the information silos, as my colleagues uh, were telling. This generational gap also, it was uh, very important. And then after uh, this uh, 15 years, the result of the transformation of the digital transformation of, of a, a water utility was the creation of a new technology uh, called GoAiwa, and uh, also a new company called Idrica, where I'm, I'm now working. This, this company uh, has uh, the technologies, a service and technology provider for the water cycle. And we said always that this is a technology by utilities for utilities because uh, we are coming from a from a utility and from our results of the digital transformation process. So this digital transformation process start with the development of different applications for specific use cases, and it was a step forward. Um, but uh, the problem was that uh, um, at the end we have different uh, applications. But uh, it it were different isolated use cases and, and data management. So we said that at the end we built after some years uh, like a digital Frankenstein. Then with this experience many years ago we decided okay this is we have we solved some problems but I but we have uh, many silos um, and so we need to develop a data centric architecture um, for this platform. So the the um, the way uh, was to develop this data centric uh, architecture where where all data received is standardized with the system and can be used by the different applications that solve different use cases for the water cycle. And something important is was not to replace the system because we had many different utilities and and cities, and every utility had has its own uh, GIS model and and things like that. So it was very important to integrate all the, the information. So our platform has uh, different modules for water, solving problems like uh, leakage, non-revenue water, asset management, and so on, for wastewater, like plants or networks related, also for agriculture and irrigation. And finally, we have a, a, an area or modules for water resources. So supporting resource management in river basins and real-time monitoring for extreme events. So for every of this uh, sector, we have different modules that you can see in our webpage. But at the end, um, the product who was called Go Iwa from January from this uh, from last year, sorry, uh, is called Silent View Power by Go Iwa because uh, Idrica partner with uh, Silent a worldwide company with uh, with uh, presence in more than 150 countries so we unified all our technology and, por and portfolio and uh, i will talk specifically among all these cases and modules about the, the digital twin for uh, drinking water okay uh, in this case i uh, we can say okay what is the definition of of a uh, uh, of a dig digital twin. I think Slavko and my colleagues were explaining more or less what it is. Um, and, but the most important is that uh, at the end it's a virtual representation of a physical product, process, or service. And we need to say, okay, what are the main components for that digital twin? We have a data-centric platform that integrates and concentrates all the information coming from the real world, like GIS information, sensors, SCADA, providing a lot of data on the uh, hydraulic performance of the system. We have also a hydraulic model to simulate the behavior in real time of the network. And we have also advanced analytics using AI and machine learning. So um, the idea after that, and many years using and calibrating this model, I can show you that we began 
like in 1994 with a static, mo a static model, then a dynamic model that was only for planning and, and design uh, that many, many companies already had. Then after that, uh, we decided to connect in 2007 with a connection with SCADA. Then after that, to connect with all offline sensors, then the integration with other systems, not only real time what if scenario, but also connecting with smart meeting, smart metering, work orders, and all the other tools uh, in the company so that the, the end we have a real time uh, digital twin. This digital twin in, in Valencia, um, we have uh, like the physical assets and the digital twin, the physical asset, assets were like in, in Valencia, more than 51 municipalities, more than 1.7 million inhabitants to drink, uh, drinking water treatment plants. Uh, a main um, distribution network and more than 1,200 distribution uh, secondary network. It was a loop network. So um, what we did is to connect, as I said, all these uh, models and systems that we already have. Very important was not to replace systems. If we have a EPA net or other models or different GIS, to use and give value to the system that we already had. That was very important. So now what we have is a hydraulic model connected in real time. We can uh, perform in the past, present in real time, every minute running the hydraulic model and in the future run different scenarios and uh, feed it by more than two, uh, 20,000 daily readings and 400,000 small meters giving one hour uh, connect, um, data uh, every hour. And so we have more than 10,000 virtual uh, sensors uh, in, in the network. And we can know uh, all the variables in, in every uh, junction of the, of the platform. So the applications and benefits um, of the platform, as I said, we had like two different stages of the platform. At the beginning, before to connecting and having a real digital twin, the application benefits of a planning tool like optimal network design. Uh, this is already known since many years ago, a like contingency planning and so on. You you can see you can see here, sorry, it's my phone. You can see here um the uh, how it looks like uh, the the digital twin and different um, issues or, or applications like non-revenue reduction, maintenance scheduling or define the behavior of me of new infrastructures. Uh, and also something very important is the application benefits for the daily operation. And that was um, very interesting during the last year, all the lessons that we learned in Valencia, because this is a real digital twin running since many years. And because the first thing was the operators at the beginning, the lesson was the older operators need to run and use the system in order to trust them and they see, okay, this system will not replace me. This system will help me. This is very important. And after that, it was used uh, and is still using for uh, training new operators, also for detecting hidden failures and anomalies, for example, for performing analysis. For example, I want to close this valve or I, I want to do a maintenance uh, works in some area. So I will uh, simulate this and show what happens if I have all the pressures okay and so on. So, and for future simulations, we have also this very important the early response to emergencies. Also, we have a module related to water quality monitoring and the water age. This is also very useful to, to look in every point of the network. And also in order to help for leak location and, and energy optimization that all my colleagues were mentioning, this is also very, very important. And at the end is a decision support system in order to take better decision, but based on data. Um, some results, and I, uh, I hope I will be at time on time. Uh, some results in, in Valencia, uh, some KPIs obtained during the last years were more than four uh, cubic hectometers uh, saved annually, 18% uh, of non-revenue reduction. We need to take into account it was a very technological water utility, so that the reduction is uh, um, very amazing. 
Uh, also, 19% uh, in reduction in maintenance cost and, and the, the reduction of the complaint was very important because we could see uh, all the time when before someone calls in the telephone uh, with all the sensors uh, and the digital twins see very uh, have early alarms of all the behavior of the of the network. Uh, please, Jorge, if you can wrap up. Yeah, please. this is a wrap up and something very important to remark just to end is that uh, the software and technology, as my colleague said, is very important, but we also but also it's very important to select and use the right tools and the, uh, at the right moment and feed it by data with enough quality. And uh, we train teams that take the value from the technology. So yeah. in Idrica, what we offer is our platform, but also our experience coming from our utility to develop this digital transformation, transformation journey and later to use and detect the problems using the, the technology. So uh, yeah. please, anyone who has questions, uh, you can find me here or in LinkedIn. Thank yeah, you thanks so much, uh, thanks so much, Olga, for your uh, great presentation. It shows us really uh, a great work and the really benefits from digitalization. And uh, this is bringing us, you know, to to uh, the final of our webinar. But before we uh, we end this webinar, we share them some results, and also I could ask all the speakers, starting from Jorge, if you could give uh, one key message when it comes to implementing a digital transformation uh, in uh, in the water sector. Uh, just to give uh, some uh, uh, results on, on that, so we see that our major challenges when it comes to adequate infrastructure, financial resources, but also there are many aspects for benefits for from digital twin in terms of uh, asset visualization and predictive analysis and future needs planning. And uh, for sure, the experience of many countries uh, uh, representing by here the audience is that the majority of them, they are in the initial uh, stage. This is leads us that we need really to do more uh, and work more. And for sure, uh, uh, like uh, many people needs also to be familiar with digitalization because it's a new topic for many and this is really uh, a need for a crucial here extremely crucial and very crucial to have a roadmap which is essential to guide the water stakeholder on this and for sure at the end they all are interested to see more uh, of such webinars and projects and journeys for different countries to do so. So uh, maybe one message we can have it, uh, you know, from each one. Just in less one minute, please. Okay, should I begin? Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Hassan. Just as my last part of the, my presentation is, in technology is very important, but it's also very important to have someone with experience in the digital transformation journey, uh, and uh, not to do the same mistakes that many other companies already did in this journey. Yeah. So thank you. Technology Lillian? and people. Thank you. Thank you, Lilian. Yes. Uh, the same, uh, I think the people is involved with you since the beginning. And then if you cannot have the people that want to follow your directives, you cannot. If you don't have the policies, you can talk about environment. But uh, digital could be the great things for the water sanitation sector. But you yeah, need to bring the people with you. That is the message. That I yeah, thank you. Salabico. I think uh, management buying is very important, obviously, so having a roadmap, but uh, digitalization is inevitably taking place, colleagues, we want it or not. So all of the colleagues who are on the call here should be champions in their organization, pushing the boundaries, doing some pilot projects and scaling up to demonstrate the value, basically, of the digitalization. Thank you. Bora? Yeah, to a similar, similar comment I'm seeing on the uh, chat and Q&A also people are saying that we don't have enough data, we don't have infrastructure, but it's not starting with data, it's starting with the people and the management. First, you need to decide to transform and then we'll help you to create the data, to create the roadmap. Uh, and we are here uh, showing you the results, our actual transformation projects already done. This is not a technology that we dream, this is already existing. 
And the first step is decision taking, I think. Thanks so much, Paul, and thanks so much, uh, everyone. And this, uh, for sure, will be delivered to UFM and also IWRA to work with this. Uh, for sure, uh, please follow uh, UFM and IWRA on this matter because we will do more in this uh, regard. And uh, last but not least, I thank everyone for uh, being with us. Uh, over to you, uh, Lindsay, for final announcement on the webinar. And thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Hassan, and thank you to each of our speakers for joining us today. Um, we had 150, more than 150 participants today, and we had a, quite an active uh, Q&A box. So thank you for your engagement and your conversation. If you would like to continue that conversation, um, please join us on, on our LinkedIn page where you can ask more questions. Also, I will be posting the recorded pr presentation as well as the individual speaker presentations on our website. I have a link posted in the chat of where you can find that, iwra.org slash webinars. Again, those will be posted within a week of time so you can access the presentations, the recording, and a summary. Additionally, IWRA has a few more ways to get involved. I've also posted those in the chat. Those include becoming a member or joining one of our task forces, which was discussed here. Hassan is a part of the Urban Water Security Group. We have many more to join. Additionally, we have a few more events coming up. We have a World Water Day webinar that I will also be hosting coming soon in March. And be on the lookout for our first Islands Water Congress. There's details also in the chat where you can uh, submit an abstract and be involved there. Again, thanks. thank you all for joining us today. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.